Hi, this is JD with a new edition of Weekly News Pills, a bouquet of hand-picked events in last seven days from across the planet. I request you to like and share these weekly news stories, subscribe to my channel and put in your valuable comments. Your comments will be a guiding light in my endeavor. News Bill 1. Indian courts order work from home over pollution in capital. India's capital is on red alert. Pollution in New Delhi has reached alarming levels, raising more health concerns for the population of 20 million. The government is taking drastic measures in an attempt to curb the impact it's having on people. This week, schools will revert to online classes, construction work has been banned and government offices will go remote. The city is also considering a two-day lockdown. Weather forecast is... Weather forecast says winds will not blow from November 14 to 17 and the smoke from burning stubble will keep coming to Delhi, so the situation could get worse then. New Delhi is one of the most polluted cities in the world. The air is toxic most of the year and causes more premature deaths than in any other big city in the world. The air quality has become especially bad this season as temperatures dip. The order comes after authorities in Delhi shut schools as they struggle to reduce hazardous air pollution in the capital region. India's Supreme Court has told authorities to shut offices in the capital and nearby cities, allowing millions to work from home as officials seek ways to reduce hazardous air pollution that led to the closure of schools. Its order on Monday came after city authorities in New Delhi, which has been battling a toxic haze since early November, took emergency measures on Saturday, ordering the closure of schools and halting building work for four days. The air quality index AQI stood at 343 on a scale of 500 in Delhi on Monday a sign of very poor conditions that can cause respiratory illness on prolonged exposure. The capital experienced severe conditions late last week as temperatures dropped and the index reached 499. The AQI surged to 451 on a scale of 500 in the wake of festival of Diwali in the first week of this month, during which firecrackers were burned across India. The AQI measures the concentration of poisonous particulate matter, PM2.5, in a cubic meter of air. Anything above 100 is considered unhealthy. The court also sought urgent steps to rein in crop waste fires in the neighboring states of Haryana, Punjab and Uttar Pradesh said by hundreds of thousands of farmers looking to clear fields for a new sowing season. India's efforts to reduce the burning of crop waste, a major source of air pollution during winter, have had little benefit despite its expenditure of billions of rupees over the past four years. News Bill 2. India opens to fully vaccinated foreign tourists. Every day tens of thousands of visitors come to see this majestic monument. The Taj Mahal is the most visited tourist site in India. But since March 2020, no tourist from abroad has visited this complex. Chitwan Rajput has been a guide for 25 years. Before the pandemic, he used to earn 900 euros a month, catering to English and German-speaking tourists. But these days, he has no clients. In the last year and a half, I haven't had any work. My life has been turned upside down. I've had to survive on my savings. 
restrictions rollback marks the first time since March 2020 that India has allowed foreign tourists on commercial flights to enter the country. India began allowing fully vaccinated foreign tourists to enter the country on regular commercial flights in the latest easing of coronavirus restrictions as infections fall and vaccinations rise. Tourists entering India starting on Monday must be fully vaccinated following all COVID-19 protocols and test negative for the virus within 72 hours of the flight, according to the health ministry. Many will also need to undergo a post-arrival COVID-19 test at the airport. However, travelers from countries that have agreement with India for mutual recognition of vaccination certificates, such as the United States, United Kingdom and many European nations can leave the airport without undergoing a COVID-19 test. Fully vaccinated tourists on chartered flights were allowed to enter starting last month. It came as coronavirus infections had fallen significantly with daily new cases hovering at just above 10,000 for more than a month. To encourage travelers to visit India, the government planned to issue 500,000 free visas through next March. Coastal states like Kerala and Goa in the country's south and Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh in the Himalayan north are already witnessing a surge in domestic tourists. All four states are heavily dependent on earnings from tourism and foreign travelers scheduling their visits there would also help lift the local economy. With more than 35 million reported coronavirus infections, India is the second worst heat country after the US. Active coronavirus cases stand at 134,096, the lowest in 17 months, according to the health ministry. Nearly 79% of India's adult population has received at least one vaccine dose, while 38% is fully vaccinated. The federal government has asked state administrations to conduct door-to-door -door campaign to accelerate the vaccine campaign. Fewer than 3 million foreign tourists visited India in 2020, a drop of more than 75% from 2019 when tourism brought nearly a US dollar 30 billion in earnings. News Bill 3 Pfizer agrees to let other companies make its COVID-19 pill. The drug maker Pfizer has signed a deal with the United Nations that group to allow other manufacturers to make its experimental COVID-19 pill, a move that is likely to make the treatment available to more than half of the world's population. In a statement that Pfizer has, uh, has uh, brought out, they've said they will grant a license for their antiviral pill to the Geneva-based medicines patent pool which would let generic drug companies produce the pill for use in 95 countries, making up about 53% of the world's population. Drug maker Pfizer, INC, has signed a deal with UN-backed group to allow other manufacturers to make its experimental COVID-19 pill, a move that could make the treatment available to more than half of the world's population. In a statement issued Tuesday, Pfizer said it would grant a license for the antiviral pill to the Geneva-based medicines patent pool, which would let generic drug companies produce the pill for use in 95 countries, making up about 53% of the world's population. Under the terms of the agreement, Pfizer will not receive royalties on sales in low-income countries 
and will waive royalties on sales in all countries covered by the agreement while COVID-19 remains a public health emergency. Earlier this month, Pfizer said its pill cut the risk of hospitalization and death by nearly 90% in people with mild to moderate coronavirus infections. Independent experts recommended halting the company's study based on its promising results. Pfizer said it would ask the US Food and Drug Administration and other regulators to authorize the pill as soon as possible. Britain authorized the Mark COVID-19 pill earlier this month and it is pending approval elsewhere. In a similar deal with the medicines patent pool announced in October, Mark agreed to let other drug makers make its COVID-19 pill molnupiravir available in 105 poorer countries. That is all for today. Thank you and goodbye for now. Stay blessed. See you in my next weekly episode.